Welcome to Season 5 of the Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom, where we talk with enterprise and technology platform leaders about the people, processes, and platforms that make marketing and customer experience successful, scalable, and sustainable. This is what creates an Agile brand. I'm your host, Greg Kilstrom advisor and consultant for Fortune 1000 marketing and CX leaders and teams as principal and chief strategist at GK5A and best-selling author, keynote speaker, entrepreneur, and Agile certified coach. The Agile Brand Podcast is brought to you by Tech Systems, an industry leader in full stack technology services, talent services, and real world application. For more information, go to teksystems.com. To sign up for the Agile Brand newsletter and get the latest insights and articles on marketing technology and CX, or to purchase a copy of my latest book, House of the Customer, go to gregkillstrom.com. You can also find all my books on Amazon and other retailers. And now on to the show. Today, we're going to talk about the reseller advantage and how to modernize businesses by using cloud communications without compromising customer relationships. To help me discuss this topic, I'd like to welcome Patrick Sheehan, Intermedia's VP of Channel Development and Distribution. Patrick, welcome to the show. Thanks, Greg. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, looking forward to talking about this topic with you. Um, Why don't we start with you giving a little background on yourself as well as a little bit about Intermedia. Sure. In my role here at Intermedia, I uh, oversee our channel development, routes to market, uh, our distribution side of the, the business. I've been uh, in the communications or telecom space in one form or fashion for, uh, for over 25 years in various roles from sales and operations and channel leadership roles with various manufacturers. I've always been on the vendor manufacturer side, so companies like Intertel, Mitel, 8x8. I uh, joined Intermedia about four years ago and uh, and couldn't be happier. Great, great company, great culture, very partner-focused. Uh, so Intermedia provides modern cloud communications platform that includes everything businesses need to communicate today. We own all the technology. And we consistently receive industry accolades as well as earning top ratings and reviews from customers and partners. Really proud of our ability to to deliver and maintain world-class customer satisfaction from our customers and partners. Uh, We have been a partner-first company for over 20 years. Over 90% of our sales today come through our partners. Uh, We are built for our partners. They have a choice in how they want to sell whether they just want to sell or if they want to be a a white label reseller, something that we've uniquely optimized and built this platform specifically for our partners and our reseller community in mind. It was not an afterthought for a company that was selling direct and then went to the channel. Great, great. So we're here to talk about cloud communications and the the reseller relationship and and things. But first, let's... uh, Let's just briefly define, uh, you know, what what do we mean when we say cloud communication solution? Right. It's a very, uh, very vague term, isn't it? <laughs> it, 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 it includes a, a broad array of tools that people use to communicate. So if you think of, of what those tools are today, the phone calls, collaboration capabilities like voice and video conferencing, uh, the ability to collaborate on documents and share screens, things like that, instant messaging or chat. SMS and texting with uh, with external parties and customers, contact center capabilities, as well as a host of other things like file sharing and backup and business email and productivity tools and security. And of course, uh, artificial intelligence is becoming more and more of part of, of what defines cloud communications today. And effectively, cloud communications allows users to communicate using all of these tools, regardless of where they are, what device they choose to use. The, the two categories within cloud communications that are very relevant for this conversation would be unified communications as a service or UCAS. And that combines some of the capabilities I just moment mentioned into a single solution. For example, everyone in business today needs the ability to communicate using all of those technologies I just mentioned. It's not just about phone calls and, and email anymore, for sure. Uh, and then there's the contact center capabilities, which today is contact center as a service. This has historically been its own part of the industry, uh, developed and delivered by distinct CCAS vendors. And uh, in some cases, UCAS providers have partnered with CCAS vendors to provide the whole cloud communication solution 
all in one invoice to the customer. Uh, although often in the market, those are still two distinctly different technologies developed and supported by two different vendors and uh, can cause some, uh, some challenges for customers that are looking to consolidate their cloud communications to a single vendor. Yeah, yeah. So some of you out there might have learned a few new acronyms out there, UCAS, CCAS, uh, or Patrick actually taught me a, a new acronym, TLA, or three-letter acronym, uh, as we were preparing <laughs> for this for this interview. So thank you, thank you for that. Um, so how how are you know UCAS, CCAS? How are these solutions implemented? Yeah, how do they how do they get to the users, right? Yeah. And if you think about how consumers get a lot of technology today, you'll you find that this isn't far too different than, than what a lot of people are used to on the consumer end, a little different on the business side of things of what people are used to historically. Um, but if you think about consumers today and in, in their, your homes and, and everywhere, you're not buying and installing servers and applications to get a really wide array of content, tools, social media, entertainment, all kinds of services that are now available to people in general. Uh, you don't even need a cable box anymore for your TV. People have cut the cord. So everything is really be just coming from the cloud, all these different capabilities. Cloud communications for businesses is, is similar. All the intelligence and the technology uh, used to be in boxes in the physical environment in an office for a physical office where everybody congregated and collaborated eight to five <laughs> every day. Right. And uh, those, as those things have changed, cloud communications has really, really boomed. So now all the technology, the intelligence is actually in the cloud and hard and secure data centers delivered right over the internet to wherever the users are. They, they can download the software on their computers, mobile devices, log in, have the access to all these capabilities that I mentioned a moment ago. One thing that is different for UCAS and CCAS type capabilities is that these applications require a fair amount of configuration and customizations for users and businesses for it to work. So it's not as simple as just download and go. Uh, so there is an implementation process that has to happen to make things go well. And uh, that has with many cloud communications providers over the years is something that you know, the industry has been known for struggles to get those implementations to go smoothly. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, as a follow on to that, you you work with partners and, and resellers. What are some of the key challenges that these partners and, and resellers face when it comes to adopting cloud communication solutions? And, you know, how do, how do they look at overcoming these challenges? Right. Yeah, there's been a, it's been a, a big shift depending on the, the type of the company, a partner organization that you are. If you're familiar with uh, Crossing the Chasm by, by Jeffrey yeah. Moore, yeah, it's, I think it's kind of important to kind of set the stage of where we at, we're at on this journey and, and companies moving to business cloud communications. I think we've, we've crossed that chasm in the, in the past uh, year or two. The, uh, the biggest opportunity certainly lies ahead. You know, today, as businesses are making decisions, almost two thirds of SMB customers are choosing cloud communications over installing or upgrading their premise-based phone system. The experts out there say that the CCAS growth, that the compound annual growth rate for CCAS is 20% over the next three years. And I think that will be even greater with recent advances in, in AI technology. So setting that stage of this growth opportunity that, that is there, you know, we've been around for quite a while, as I mentioned a moment ago, and there's two types of partners. There's agents who have been selling telecom circuits and connectivity for years in a commission model. And, uh, you know, they've had to learn new technologies, a lot of advanced capabilities, UCAS, what's CCAS, all that kind of stuff, and, and sell them. And they don't have to worry about billing and support. They've had to learn the new technology so they could sell them as a trusted advisor to their customers. And they operate in a commission model and that, that's how they built their business. However, resellers, and services providers, IT solution providers, you know, if we just call that whole bucket solution providers, you know, they have, or, or maybe they haven't actually sold those phone systems that are, that have been in place for decades, but they've built their whole business around buying hardware and software from manufacturers, delivering, supporting, and billing their end customers for the solutions and taking their support calls and effectively owning the customer relationships completely. These partners have only had the option when it comes to cloud communications to sell it in an age as an agent in a commission model. They've effectively over time have been disintermediated 
in that process from their customers since the customers are now being billed and supported by cloud providers, especially when it comes to telecom related offerings. And we'll get more into that here in a bit. But that has, uh, that has caused a lot of these partners, reseller type businesses in particular, to be hesitant to adopt the resale of cloud communications due to related complex telecom regulations, taxes, staffing costs associated with all that. They haven't been able to capture top line revenue. They just get a small percentage as a commission, which is not aligned with their business goals and objectives and how they built their business. And they just haven't had a lot of options to overcome that in the industry with cloud communication providers who are built for direct and agent sales primarily or exclusively. So FARs in particular struggle with the uh, economics of shifting from these this CapEx model that they lived in where they're you know, getting paid up front, paying their one-time commission to their sales reps and you know, depositing a big check in the bank. So moving to a monthly recurring revenue business uh, has significant cash flow implications and um, it's even exacerbated if they're only getting commissions on that. So it's really a challenge for VARs in particular. We're seeing a lot of partners in order to overcome that, you know, what, what do they need to focus on to modernize their business? And that's really, driving their business valuation, focusing on selling solutions that help them drive their own business valuation. Things that are important to that are the percentage of their MRR, strong EBITDA, and a growth rate are really critical in driving their valuation. So that's just what they've really got to focus on to, to try to overcome some of these challenges. And so that's, some of that is is kind of you'd say modernizing their, their businesses, right. Without sacrificing customer relationships and, and, and things like that. Um, you mentioned, you know, some of the, the overall approaches to take, but you know, any, any specific strategies or, or tactics for taking the next steps towards, towards modernization there. Yeah. I think the, the first thing is, you know, realizing and identifying the trend and and capitalizing on it. That's what successful companies do. So if they to uh, to grow their their businesses, so they've they've got to stay relevant to their customers' needs. Uh, they need to minimize churn, increase stickiness with their customer base. So you've got to have the, in your portfolio things that your customers are that that are in demand with your customers, and certainly providing modern communications is is part of that. And uh, you know as part of with M and A being at all time highs right now that the past couple of years, you know, modernizing your business is, is really important. So embracing the reseller model wherever possible is, is really a very specific strategy to, uh, to help modernize the business and, uh, and not sacrifice these relationships and, and give those relationships to cloud providers. So I mentioned, you know, that this reseller advantage is this consistent monthly recurring revenue that it provides to these, to these partners. Yeah. And if you compare top line monthly recurring revenue to commission model, the top line revenue creates 15 times more business value for the partners and it grows five times faster with every additional customer they add. So this is a really strategic area for a, a solution provider to focus on how they can add value into their business. They've got a customer base that they've had for years that loves and trusts them, and they can really capitalize on that with solutions the customers needs, but also uh, adding value to their business. One of the, the first thing they got to do is find a vendor that's aligned with their business goals and their, their objectives and their business model. Uh, so a vendor that effectively enables them to capture that top line revenue and maintain profitability through support and delivering those solutions is really important. And as they modernize their, their business and move into the cloud themselves, you know, the, the cloud is advancing, the landscape is advancing at, at really rapid rates. So if they don't embrace this, then ultimately it will be their demise, right? By not providing right. these, these relevant solutions. So focus on the customers, be operationally efficient, sell what's hot and, uh, and try to get that top of the line revenue to modernize their, their own business. Before we continue, I'd like to introduce you to a sponsor of the show, Partner Hero. Customer service outsourcing has long been available mainly to large enterprise businesses with long-term contracts and onerous procurement processes. 
Partner Hero is challenging business as usual and bringing the benefits of outsourcing to small and medium businesses as well as startups. With short, flexible contracts and fast ramp up times, Partner Hero is making customer support outsourcing a viable option for small and medium businesses and startups. It's perfect for companies with seasonality expecting a temporary spike in volume or that simply need to scale up. And their focus on quality means your customers will get an experience that feels like it comes from your team. If you're ready to bring in outside customer support help for your company that feels like it's part of your existing team, check out Partner Hero. Head on over to partnerhero.com slash agile, that's partnerhero.com slash A-G-I-L-E, to book a free consultation with their solutions team. Mention you heard about Partner Hero from the Agile brand and the way of the setup fee. Now let's get back to the show. So when choosing and evaluating cloud communication solutions for their customers, you know, what, what are some of the most important factors that these partners and resellers should consider? I'd say the first thing is making sure they've got a modern solution. So, you know, something that's robust that really does meet the need of customers. You've, you've got to check that box first. Is this something that's going to sell to my customers want this? Does it have all the capabilities that things I was just mentioning a moment ago? Yeah. And does that vendor, are they primarily focused on selling direct, aka competing against me, right. or selling through agents? And if they have a reseller model for for these types of partners, you know, is it really optimized for that? Were they built that way or was it an afterthought? I'll, I'll tell you, it takes a lot to build a platform optimized for resellers when it comes to cloud solutions. The second thing would be, you know, reliability and security. It's got to be something bulletproof. You know, Intermediate's got a five nines SLA and very stringent security compliance policies that uh, is important to all kinds of businesses. And especially at reliability, can't imagine having voice calls, you know, having uh, having problems with your voice calls. It's, right. That's mission critical. Uh, another thing would be the support to the partner. You know, what kind of support can the partner get from that vendor? Are they emailing and opening tickets on a portal and hoping someone calls them back or can they actually make a live call and get the problem resolved on the on the spot and uh, which is something that we we focus on do very well and with our technical support we've got JD power certification and all kinds of things that that demonstrate that we provide a very high level of customer satisfaction and first call resolution and live partner support and things like that uh, aside from reliability and support, you know, really you think about well, what goes beyond technical support, and that's really is the vendor equipped and delivering the enablement that's required for the technical teams, the operations teams, sales and marketing, especially for a new partner building a practice. You've got to have a robust onboarding program to help them build that practice. And uh, in our case, one of the things that we do on that, uh, we do all those things uh, very well, but uh, certainly uh, providing a marketing automation platform for partners to actually help them grow their business. So that kind of goes a little beyond what some will look at, consider support, but it's certainly a critical part in selecting vendors. How are they going to help you grow their business with, with marketing support? The last thing I'll put on, on this section here is really, this is telecom, highly regulated industry. So how does the partner need to deal with the regulatory and taxation requirements? And they have to register in all the states, they have to get complex systems in, in place to handle taxation. This is something that requires an investment if, if it's not provided by the vendor. Uh, in this case, it's something that we do pretty uniquely where we handle that on behalf of all of our partners so they can focus on growing their business and not worry about the very complex tax and regulatory under the telecom umbrella. Yeah, yeah. And so I think you, might have touched on some of this already, but in a crowded cloud communications market, let's just say, you know, how do partners and resellers differentiate themselves from from competitors? You know, what, what are some strategies that have been most effective for Intermedia and, and their customers in this area? Right. Yeah, it's definitely definitely a crowded space for sure. And in some cases, certain elements of it have become a bit commoditized. So it's important for the partners to be able to uh, differentiate and add value. Um, you know, some of the strategies that we're focused on with our partners that's proven to be very effective is making sure everyone's focused on customer experience with, with their customers, right? They're selling yeah. to these businesses out there and you've really got to be focused on customer experience and everything you're doing. It's the new battleground out there, right? For businesses in general, it's so easy for customers, you know, end customer consumers, whoever they are to just switch to another, another business for that service. So focusing on CX 
customer experience. Uh, leading with that definitely allows customers, our partners to differentiate and win against a lot of the competition out there. So this is something that Intermedia has really innovated on, not just in the technology and, and you know, enablement and marketing support for, for partners to, to get up to speed on talking about the importance of customer experience, but uh, we've actually brought uh, unified communications and contact center together, as I mentioned a moment ago, and that provides our partners a differentiator out there where they have a single application for customers of all sizes that includes all their voice, video, file sharing, and their contact center capabilities on desktop or mobile. And that's really critical in differentiating out there and not the race to the bottom of who's got the cheapest dial tone, cheap phones from the cloud and leveraging all the digital channels that are that people expect today, you know, SMS, web chat, self-service IVRs. There's lots of capabilities that our partners can leverage and we've been very focused on that. And of course, underpinning AI uh, around all of those things as well, helps our partners to, to, uh, to differentiate uh, in the crowded space. Yeah, and their yeah. white glove support is critical for them. Absolutely. And yeah, I want to get to AI in a second here. But first, what are what are some common misconceptions or maybe myths about cloud communications that, you know, you you said, you know, you've you've been in the space for a while, you've probably encountered some of these some questions here, you know, how can and how can partners and resellers address some of these issues with their customers and prospects? Yeah. You know, over the years as the, the, the cloud in its infancy, there was lots of concerns. You know, one of the first things, uh, you know, back in the day is, was, was the voice quality, you know, just wasn't going to be there. The call quality, it can't rival that of, of the installed phone systems. And, you know, today, if so much has changed with technology, with the infrastructure that's out there, it's, uh, it is actually better call quality today than, uh, than it is from the traditional phone systems and being a, what I'll call myself an, an old phone guy. Um, you know, I got rid of my desk phone a couple of years ago here at, at Intermedia because I realized the soft phone on my computer just sounds so much better. So, uh, so we can check that myth off for sure. Sure. Security, you know, has been a concern in the past, but I can tell you that, you know, our cloud communications, you know, intermedia as, as an example and, and others, you know, this, this data is in hardened secure data centers that no individual customers can afford to do themselves unless they're a very large enterprise. So it's certainly more secure probably than what's in their own uh, applications or, or their own servers if they still have some of those out there. Uh, losing control would be another one. Do they have the ability to manage their business and, and manage things themselves? Um, that's certainly something that Self-service is certainly part of cloud communications today, so we don't have to worry about that. The last thing is cost. You know, the cloud costs more. You have to pay for this forever where you could buy a phone system and you stop paying for it at some point. Uh, you know, that that's a big one because not only is the cost around the same as customers have today, and in many cases, particularly for distributed organizations, the costs are lower moving to the cloud, but there are simply capabilities that are made available from the cloud that you just can't get from an on-premise phone system. And those capabilities can actually help them grow their business. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you mentioned AI a, a couple times already. Intermedia recently launched AI transcription redaction, which is a new data privacy and security feature designed to automatically identify and redact sensitive com customer information from contact center voice transcriptions. What role are things like this and maybe AI in general going to play in cloud communications in the future? Yeah, you, you can't really have this conversation without talking about AI, right? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's definitely all the talk now, and and not just in our space. Uh, it's certainly very disruptive. You know, AI and, and generative AI and the new things that have come available. Um, we've never seen a technology in the world that has scaled so quickly as generative AI. It, in the past less than a year, yeah, <laughs> everybody yeah. in the world is talking about it and people are, have already implemented it in, in many ways. So you just, you just mentioned the one with the redaction and so for privacy and security are, you know, our, our spark AI technology that we have, 
you know, removes that sensitive data and all that. That's certainly one application. So people don't have access to social security numbers, passwords, date of birth, things like that. When you have transcribed calls sitting in a database, you know, payment data is another good example for a financial organization or anyone taking credit cards. If you're recording those calls or transcribing those, being able to redact that information is, is really critical, certainly for medical organizations, having personal health information, you know, having those things redacted is really critical for those types of companies. Yeah, we, for years, uh, I mentioned earlier that AI has been part of the communications landscape for a long time, particularly in the contact center space. So it's something that we've been deploying and leveraging and, and contact center companies have for, for many years. And uh, we're actually leveraging it and have been across other types of uh, capabilities in the platform. For example, in meetings, you can have it automatically transcribe meetings, automatically call out action items that somebody said they were going to do something and, and things like that. So we have you know, assistance there. So that's something that's you know not broadly known or thought of when it comes to AI, but just one of the ways that we're providing AI technology and, and leveraging it to make uh, businesses and individual users more, more efficient to reduce their note taking so they can really focus and, and be more productive. We'll see AI. I can't wait. I mean, this is one of the things I love about being in this industry, quite frankly, is to see where do we take it next? And we're, we're doing a lot of things across the board to automatically summarize calls, sentiment analysis to identify great calls or maybe bad calls that might need some attention, all kinds of things like that. It is, it is the next big thing. And we are consistently you know, developing new and new AI technologies uh, you know, quarter over quarter and can't see what we're saying about AI, you know, in, in just about a year or two from now, as uh, things are just so exponentially growing in this area. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it'll be it'll be interesting to to look back as as you said, in in twelve months and and see all the all the things, lots, lots of stuff in progress just to, across the board. Well, Patrick, thanks so much for joining the show. I've got one last question before we wrap up here. What role do you see channel partners playing in the future of cloud communications and how can they uh, position themselves for success in this area? It's a huge opportunity. And when they've got, when they have the ability to, to function as autonomously as possible and delivering all of this advanced technologies that are only available in the cloud, if they can capitalize on these trends and, and align with a vendor that, that properly enables them to deliver the white glove support that they've built their business on over decades, they're known for that. They're in the communities with their customers. They're known for delivering great solutions and providing great support. They can align themselves with vendors like Intermedia that specifically focus on enabling them to do that, to grow their business. You know, it is so valuable for their end customers. It's so valuable for their own business valuation, this age of M&A, whether they're going to buy or sell, it's, it's extremely valuable, you know, for them. So the, uh, you know, it's really, it's limitless where, where they want to take it with a, with a little bit of focus in the right vendor that now helps make it easy for it. Wonderful. Well, again, I'd like to thank Patrick Sheehan, Intermedia's VP of Channel Development and Distribution for joining the show. You can learn more about Patrick and Intermedia by following the links in the show notes. Thanks again for listening to the Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom podcast, brought to you by Tech Systems. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to subscribe on your podcast channel of choice and leave us a rating so that others can find the show more easily. You can access more episodes of the show at www.gregkilstrom.com. That's G-R-E-G-K-I-H-L-S-T-R-O-M.com. To get a copy of my latest book, House of the Customer, visit my website, or you can find it on Amazon or other retailers. The Agile brand is produced by Missing Link, a Latina-owned, strategy-driven, creatively-fueled production co-op. From ideation to creation, they craft human connections through intelligent, engaging, and informative content. Until next time, stay agile.